How many types of shocks have you ever had of? Heartbreak. <clears throat> Come on, I'm talking about uh, <laughs> first thing. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back. Hello guys, welcome back. Today, as you already know, Irene is back. Hey, how have you been? I've been very well, thank you. Uh, what do you want to tell the guys? Keep safe, keep keeping safe. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we're back again with another series, as you can see. When she's at home, we just do, which it chat, but I let the, the guests speak. Then when we're alone, we can talk. Uh, from the last uh, video, we'll do another session where we'll be answering your questions, those who have participated. Remember, we also have an Instagram account that is Safety Plug. And Irene's details are always at the end of our vi videos. If you want any training, you can reach her out, her email, you can DM. And remind them what you do again. I'm a safety trainer and also auditor. So today we're going to discuss about shock. How many types of shocks have you ever had of? Heartbreak. <clears throat> Come on, I'm talking about uh, <laughs> first thing. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't notice shock. Okay. Stop kidding. <laughs> so shock basically is a life-threatening condition that results to the vital organs of the body, like the heart and the brain, be getting deprived of oxygen. Okay, what causes shock? Shock might be caused by different factors. It might be severe bleeding, it might be because you've received bad or good news. So basically, Anne, what I'm trying to say is, we have different types of shock. The first type of shock is psychogenic shock. This is shock that is caused by a result of receiving either bad or good news. We have septic shock. Septic shock is caused from severe injuries like burns. We have toxic shock. This is shock that is caused from taking in toxins or being exposed to a toxicological environment. We have cardiogenic shock. This is shock that is resulted from a person who's having a heart attack. We have anaphylactic shock. This is shock that is caused uh, or resulted by a severe allergic reaction. We have people who have massive allergic reaction. Like for example, you hear there are people who don't eat peanuts. Then lastly, we have circulatory shock. This is shock that is caused from severe bleeding. Cases like partial or complete amputations or deep fractures. What are the signs and symptoms that this person who is having shock is portraying? So this person, remember, the key sign and symptom is that this person, remember we said that they have a tendency of losing a lot of heat to the surrounding, and that is why we'll cover them with our thermal blanket over here, thermal blanket. As we are going to demonstrate, as we are going to demonstrate at the end of the video, another thing is, this person will have or you'll see profuse sweating because of the tendency of losing a lot of heat to the surrounding. And you know, one way of the body cooling system is sweating. So these people have profuse sweating. And additionally, because of losing a lot of mineral salts and water through the sweating, they also complain of extreme thirst. So what we do is we always recommend that in case this person is complaining of thirst, do not attempt to give them water. So that answers your question from the other video. Yeah. Why a first aid kit is not, whether it is supposed to have a bottle of clean drinking water or not. Mm -hmm. So guys, most of the times you you watch a video, uh, sorry, but sometimes you're watching a YouTube video, you see someone faints, then they say, bring water, run. Never do that to a person who, is, who, has, who needs first aid. Yeah. Remember, you are not a doctor. You are just there to help. Don't give people medicine like painkillers or whatever type of medicine. Just help them. Call for help. 
and to make sure that you, you never give someone water, you're not a doctor, and you could kill them. That is it. That's the brutal truth. Yeah. Also, you see, you might be in a hurry to give this person water and remember these people because of lack of oxygen to the vital organs of the body like the brain they might become unconscious at any time so in the process of giving them anything to eat or drink and they become unconscious it might result to another case of choking and this might be might lead to a fatal incident another thing is that our brain is very interesting you don't have to give this person water you can just wet the lips to twist the brain a little bit until the EMTs or the doctors get to where your patient is or you take the casualty to the hospital another thing that these people portray is anxiety they also complain of nausea or they may even vomit some of them may even vomit these casualties also have a weak rapid pulse so when you are managing these casualties the first thing you have to do is to monitor the primary goals of the airway to ensure that the airway is open check for the breathing and check for the circulation of blood so how do I manage shock 